Okay, in this screen cam we're going to be looking at the output impedance of uh, this uh, operational amplifier circuit. Okay, so we're really concerned with Z out this time. We've got our standard non-inverting amplifier and we want to see what actually happens. So let's have a look at what we can actually do in our design work here and let's see uh, exactly how things fit. What might seem strange is we're connecting this voltage source here at the output to the output of the op amp and we're creating current flowing into the op amp of I in. So Z out we should be able to define quite simply as voltage over current. So whatever current flows in, uh, voltage over that current gives us our Z out value. Okay. We come into this node here and Kirchhoff's current law tells us the sum of the current flowing into the junction is the sum of the current flowing out. So we can write out our first few expressions. We should be able to write out that I in is equal to I feedback, whatever that feedback current is, plus I OP, the current going into the op amp. Okay? So again, we've got something very simple from a start point. If we take the feedback current for the moment, we see the current is going to come through this resistor. We get to this node and it's going to split. Some's going to go into R in, the input impedance of the op amp, and some's going to go into R1, part of the external feedback network. So let's just sketch out what that means. Effectively, we've got our voltage source, V, driving into RF, and then we have R in, and we have uh, this is R in, the op amp resistance, and this is R1, this is RF and here is my source V. So this is the current IF, the feedback current. Okay, so let's write out a little bit of maths. Feedback current is equal to the voltage divided by RF plus uh, the parallel combination of R in plus R1. Okay, we can expand that a little bit if we want to. I don't like using the, just the parallel symbol. RF plus R in, R1, R in, plus R1. Okay? So that's straightforward. We've actually found that current. Now we need to find the current flowing into the actual operational outputs, uh, amplifier output stage. So we need to define this current IOP. Okay, let's have a look at that one. Well, the voltage at this node is V, the supply that we're actually putting on the output. The voltage at this node is minus AV VDM. Okay, and the impedance is the textbook impedance or the datasheet impedance R out. So my current should be V minus minus AV VDM, all divided by my output impedance R out. Okay, again that's quite straightforward. Double negative inside here, so we can tidy that one up. V plus AV VDM all over R out. Okay. Now there's a little complexity here. Let's just think about what the complexities are. We've got to define VDM, so we need to define this volt source here, VDM, as a function of my voltage coming in here. So that's going to be a voltage divider. We're then going to need to sub all these currents, the feedback current and the IOP, into here. Once we feed them back in, we can then divide that through by, or divide the voltage by that value, and we will arrive at Z out. So I need to put all these onto a new sheet. Okay. So let's start here. If our, our first equation that we really needed was I in, the total current, is equal to IF, the feedback current, plus um, IOP, the current flowing in the op amp. Okay, we've already defined that the feedback current is in effect going to be V divided by uh, our feedback resistor plus our input impedance, R1, uh, multiplied sorry by uh, R in of the op amp, all divided by R1 plus R in. Okay. And then we've also now proven as well that this one is IF, our feedback current. We've also proved that our op amp current is effectively um, V plus AV. VDM all divided by uh, R out, the output impedance of the op amp. So now we need to find VDM from the circuit. So VDM is a voltage divider 
and we have V as our source, which is our output, in, uh, our output, and we have uh, we have our R1 in parallel with R in of the op amp, all divided by well the same term plus RF, our feedback resistor. Okay. So now we've got this VDM, we've got that value, we can feed all of those lot together and we can calculate uh, a value for I in in total. Okay. So our total current flowing into this, as you set up here, is IF, so I'll substitute this term down here. So we have V upon RF plus R1, R in over R1 plus R in. Okay, there's my first term. That is my feedback current. And now I'm going to add in um, my um, outputs, my, my trans, this current here. Okay, so I've got my voltage over my output resistance plus this value. So I'll, I'll, if I split the denominator here and I split this and take this in two parts, it makes it a little bit easier. So I've got V over R out. So I've got whatever that voltage was, and I'm going to have now here a V, and I've now got VDM here, so this is V R1 in parallel with R in, all divided by R1 in parallel with R in plus R F. Okay, so that is now my um, my, my voltage source here, AV VDM, and of course all of that actually needs divide, uh, dividing by uh, my R out. So if I extend that and I stick R out there, uh, we've got our terms. Okay, so we've got all of our all of our terms together, and now we remember that Z out is equal to V upon I in whatever current we have flowing. So we can effectively write. Z out is equal to V divided by all of this lot. So effectively the V's would cancel and we reciprocate. So we end up with this term. The V will cancel from here. So we've got effectively something like a reciprocal of RF plus R1, Rn over R1 plus Rn. And we have a plus term, so we have this term here. The V disappears, so it's 1 over R out, and then we have another plus term here, so now we have AV R1 in parallel with R in, okay, all divided by R out, brackets R1 in parallel with R in plus RF, okay. I, I, I should have expanded all of that term, but I haven't done here just for convenience. So now let's just have a quick think, what does that mean? If we want to know what the output impedance of this operational amplifier is in circuit, it's not this term. It's not R out. The reciprocal of the reciprocal of R out will be the R out resistance. It's not that value. That value is effectively in parallel with all of this term, which is like an input factor or an input uh, an input value. Okay, so you're going to effectively reduce R out. Let's look at this term here for a moment. AV for the operational amplifier is massive. We're talking hundreds of thousands. 100,000 is a value, typically. Whatever this denominator is here, okay, when you're multiplying this numerator by 100,000, we effectively are going to get a very, very large number. So this value here will be large. Okay, This one will be small, and this one effectively will be quite small. When you reciprocate, 1 over small, you get large. 1 over small, you get large. This one, you get small. So Z out is driven low because of that term. Z out is low because you've got AV, the open loop gain of the operational amplifier, physically driving the impedance down lower. So there you go. We've gone through the Z out output impedance of this design.